Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to start the character panel for our RPG. It's going to be a panel that just displays our character's health, our player level, the stats that our player currently has, and also the weapon that is currently equipped. Pretty simple, but it's going to be pretty cool. Show you a way that you can uh, handle a couple of different things. Like we're going to interact with the player's weapon controller from the UI. And we're also going to display the calculated stat value of the character stats in the UI. Because we have all those stats. We don't have a lot of stats. We have like two or three stats. But we have those stats and we don't know what they actually are. We're just assuming that they're working. So it'd be nice to be able to see them displayed in a UI element. And we can see them changing whenever we equip a weapon and all of that. And also this panel will give us a way to unequip a weapon because currently unless you equip another weapon there's no way to uh, unequip your current weapon so we're going to add the ability to do that in this character panel now this episode is going to be focused entirely on the UI we're just going to be laying out the UI nothing else no code so if you don't care about laying out the UI and seeing what uh, what components I use for what then you may want to skip this one and jump on the next one where we actually write the back end, the code, and make everything work. But let's go ahead and get started laying out the UI. And apologies, it is 4.30 in the morning. Bit of a late night. I've been kind of busy for the past few days. But uh, I'm, gonna, I'm going to knock this out. Here we go. So in our canvas, I want to create a panel, just as we have done for all of these UI elements at this point. Go to 2D mode, and I'm going to just zoom out. I'm going to double click on this to center it in the frame. And I'm going to change this to a 16 by 9 just to give us something restricted to work with. And now this UI element is not going to be resizable or any of that. It's going to be a set size, and it's going to allow me to show you a different way to design UI elements. Because I've shown you now the, the whole stretching thing and letting everything fill its space and all that but not all elements require that unless you have a multitude of, of resolutions or you also allow windows to be resized then it's not that necessary but you can definitely apply the techniques that we've learned for the UI uh, such as the inventory to this as well but I'm just showing you a different way to go about it it's more of a static layout so I'm going to take and call this character or Stick with the theme here, panel, character. I'm going to resize this to something that I want to work with. Just some arbitrary size for now. Maybe about like that. And about that width. That'll be fine. I want to take the inventory and disable it. And the dialogue and disable it. Actually, first... Let's go in our inventory. I want to turn that back on. And I want to see the inventory details. I'm going to grab this color. And we're going to use this color for a couple of things, perhaps, in our character panel. So disable that again. So I'm going to take this character panel. I want to actually make it that color that is copied. Just like that. Easy, easy. So now what I want to do is we're going to lay out the blocks that's going to make up the panel. We're going to have at the top, divide this into two, and have on the left side our level, and on the right side our health. And it's going to be displayed using a radial progress bar. It'd be pretty cool. Just as simple as any other kind of bar, but it's just a different thing that we've not touched on before, so I thought we'd use that. Then we'll have a list of the stats, and then on the bottom we'll have the equipped weapon icon with the stats and the name be pretty simple. I want to uh, something like that. I'm trying to see it in my head here because I think the top's going to be square. So if it's square and it's that wide, they're going to be pretty pretty big. Something like that perhaps. Around there. We can change that if we want to. Again, do whatever you want to do. So at the top here, I'm going to divide this into two using a couple of blocks. But what I want to do is I want to use a couple of empties. Now if you create an empty within a UI element, such as a canvas, it's going to create a rect transform empty instead of just a regular transform empty. 
which is great for what we want to do. So I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to place it up here in the top left corner. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to grab this panel and I want to set the width on this. Notice it's set to stretch all four. So if I'm doing this, it's going to stretch to match the canvas. And already I'm not liking that. Now this is good for the inventory because it is resizable in a sense. It can be scaled. Uh, but this panel is going to be a different approach, as I said. So I'm going to take this and I just want to set it to be center on both axes there. So now the, it's going to be anchored to the middle and it's not going to stretch either way. So that's great. So now what I can do is I want to set the width to something like three we'll do 300 and the height to four four twenty five just like that and the reason i'm setting those first of all because i like a number to be a solid number <laughs> and not 302.3 right 307 i want it to be 300 or 310 or 325 or 350 so that's great. So now I want to take this and I want to make this half the width of this panel. So it's 300. So this will be, if you can do basic math, 150. But I want it to be a square. So I'm going to do it 150 by 150. And there we have half the panel. Now, as I was saying before, if this panel is wide, the square is going to be big. Right? So that's probably too big as it is. Maybe we'll do something like 250. That might make more sense for our style here, for the because we're going to have a list of stats, maybe a single column or a double column. I'm not too sure yet. And then we'll have our weapon down here. So maybe that'll work. And then I'll take this game object and make it 125 by 125. Okay, cool. So I also want to take this panel here and make the background none so it's just a simple um, a simple sprite that we can control the tint on completely so I'm gonna make it I'm gonna leave it that blue actually I think that'll work for us and I'm gonna grab this and I'm going to call it level and we're just laying out the blocks for our UI I'm gonna duplicate this and place it over there on the other side and I want to call it health so I'm going to take this one and make sure it's anchored to the top left, and this one is anchored to the top right. Now, it doesn't necessarily matter in this UI element because it's not going to be resized, but uh, just for practice sake, I'm going to keep doing that. And then I want to create another empty object, and I'm going to place it below those, those two blocks we just created. And I'm just going to make this and go full width and just about which would be 250, and make the height uh, about 150. That could be bigger than that. Something like... Hmm. Something like that, maybe? And I'm going to call this stats. And actually, no, I know I want to go a bit higher, or a bit uh, shorter than that. We'll make it 200 because I know I want to have the stats or the weapon name above the actual weapon. So if I were to do this and I want to create another empty actually, come down here, I'm going to line this up. So this should be 250 by, this should be 100. What is this one set to? 200. That's 100. Oh, it's not at the very top. Let's pull that up to match it up there. And then I can... That's matched up perfectly. Okay, there we go. Cool. So now inside of this, I want to call this one first. It's going to be weapon. Now inside of weapon, I'm going to create an image. Now an image is pretty much what we just... What we were creating before has the rec transform, but it also has an image component which is what we need. So I'm going to take this, make it full width, and I'm just going to make a little bar right here. Something like that. And the color on it, I'm going to grab the blue from the background, 
and just make it a bit lighter. Maybe a bit darker. Hmm, I don't know. A bit lighter. Then I'm going to call this name, weapon name. I could have called it weapon name, but I'm just going through the parent and saying, okay, the weapon and then also the name. Should not be too hard, should not get too confused by doing that. Then inside of this, I will have a text component. And I'm going to make this one match the height. Ooh. Okay, so I'm going to take this and make it match the height of this. What is the height of this? It should be something, it's 25, okay. So that's going to be 25 as well. It's going to be 0, 0, 25. Then I want to set it to be centered on the horizontal and the vertical. And then I'll make a full width just in case, or just because. Okay. And after following along and you want to make this resizable as we have in the past, this will be something you resize completely horizontally or both ways. The entire panel would be resizable in all ways. The blocks at the top would be resizable in all ways with the anchors set accordingly to the edges. And then the character uh, stats in the middle would be the same with the anchor set accordingly to the edges. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to make it a size 16. It's going to be, make it a Ooh, I don't like, I don't like the background color on this. So I'm going to take this, and we're actually going to make it darker. And just for testing, I'm going to call this the Great Sword. And make it bold. Okay, looks good. And now this is the weapon section. So in the weapon section, we're going to have an image. It's going to be in the bottom left I'm going to uh, roughly resize this for now and it's going to be an icon for the image or for the, the, the weapon then we're going to have the stats listed over here and we're going to be able to click on the image and it's going to unequip that weapon it's pretty cool pretty simple to do so what I want to do though is I want to take this and we're going to make it what should the size be I think it's actually going to be 75 by 75 because we're, we're using numbers that are very um, math friendly. <laughs> Shouldn't be too hard to figure this out. How to lay out our blocks. Is that actually off? That's 25. This whole element here is 100. So this should be 75. Hmm. It's probably something obvious. Just a bit of a mathematical error. Height is 25. Height is 100. And then height is 75. 75 plus 25. I'm pretty sure. I want to anchor this first of all to the left and set the anchor to the left and then I'll set this to zero and the position cannot be to zero because of the offset from that it should be 25 half of 25 down so negative 12.5 is what math would tell me we're going to say that's good enough Then I'm not going to do for testing, as I want to grab, by testing I just mean looking at it and seeing how it looks. I want to grab an icon from, what is it, UI, icons, from within our icons items folder in the resources. I'm just going to take my, I'm going to take my image and I'm going to apply the staff sprite. And that's how it's going to look. And then we're going to have a list of stats over here but the stats are going to be in two columns and we're not necessarily sure how many stats there are going to be per item because each item can define unique stats so if we have a staff it's going to have intellect or uh, some kind of magical power stat then it may have a defense stat and attack speed stat while a sword will have a 
like a brute power stat and uh, a melee speed attack kind of thing. I don't know what I just said, but you understand what I'm trying to say, I think. There'll be different stats for different weapons. So we don't know what they are going to be ahead of time. So we're just going to create them during runtime. We're going to create the text objects to represent that during runtime. So for now, what that means is I'm going to take and create an empty object again. And it's going to be 75. And the width, see the width on this is 250. And this is 75. So the width on this will be 175. And I'm going to place this in its corner there. And this is going to be called stats. Weapon stats. Okay, so now within this, we're going to have a grid of text objects. But to do that, we're going to need a component on stats. And it's going to be the grid component. Grid layout group. And this is going to allow us to define the cell size and the padding around the cells per cell. So the cell size, say we take, I know the width of this is 175. And I want a half that. It's not that mathematically pleasing as the other ones have been. So if you take, say, 180, that would be 90. So we have to take off 5. It's going to be uh, 87.5. So if we take this and we say the cell size is 87.5, which isn't, uh, like I said, I like my numbers to be um, complete whole numbers, but that'll be fine for this. Because then I can also define a left, right, top, and bottom batting. We're making them five. And I'll show you what this is doing really fast here. When I create a UI text object within this, if I select this and say that the actual Y cell size, the vertical cell size is going to be about 20. Notice it places the object in there for me. The width of that is 87.5, and the height of that is 20. So now I want to make sure that this is set to be aligned vertically in the center. Horizontally, it'll be on the left. It'll be fine for mine. And I'm going to make it white for now. Now if I duplicate this, it gets brought down here because we're not accounting for the padding like we defined here, right? So if we have padding on the left and the right side of five pixels each, that or five units each, that makes it 10 units total. So I'm going to take off 10 units total from the cell size, making it 7750, which is a lovely number. And this will allow me to see that, okay, my math is off. It's 80... 8250? It's 8250. I don't know, but <laughs> I don't know where my math came from there. But I somehow got off by 10, probably from the beginning, because it is 10 till 5 in the morning. So that's going to be whatever I just said. It was 82.5, 82 and a half by 20. And please don't go correcting my math in the comments. Obviously, I'm going to find the fix and find the error and then fix it. It was just a simple slip up. I don't need everybody telling me that I was off by 10 or that I don't know how to divide. We're, we're all good here. So with that, I'm going to take this and say that this is power of 20. And this is attack speed of... 17. Just something to put in there for testing, for looking at it and seeing if it looks okay. If I duplicate that, you get what you'd expect, right? That's fine. That's how I want the stats to be displayed for our weapon. Cool. But I want a similar thing for our character stats. So it's going to be displayed in a grid just like that, maybe a bit larger. So I'm going to take stats, add another grid layout group to it. And we're going to do something similar here, and probably with the same amount of terrible math. So the width is 250. Now, I can, I can define that pretty good. That's, that's 125. 
half point the halfway point is 125 so now I know that if I take this and I say okay well 125 I'm going to add some padding to it as well right so I'm gonna have five all around as we did before padding being the border around it the spacing around it so if I add 10 total padding horizontally 5 plus 5 that this should be 115 ideally if I could do basic math but I cannot that has been proven so I'm going to do 115 by 25 create another text element just as we did a second ago make sure it is centered vertically so that it is in the middle of its point so it doesn't look offset whenever we have multiple in the grid and then I want to make it also white I want to make these bold just because and I'm going to say power is 22 and let's make this 16 and that padding is not enough I don't like that, that that's not enough padding but what about this what if we centered the column like that so that when I do this now we have columns of them but the, the thing is is whenever I change say this to attack speed and make it 17 it's going to be offset a bit right but if I didn't have it that way if I had it off to the left oops the actual one there it's still going to have an offset it's just all on one side it just depends on how you want to do that so if I were to do this and say I want them all to be off to the left or off to the right or centered uh, per column we can do it that way and I think that or per text element I think that'll work fine for what I want so I'm gonna take most of these and just delete them because that's how I want it to be and we know that we got there we're good so that's gonna be fine for whenever we want to start adding the elements in actually maybe I'll just uh, change up the color here make these yellow or something I don't know you do you do like a Bob Ross kind of thing it's your little world if you want a happy little bush over here somewhere just put your happy little bush right there maybe a little squirrel lives in there it's your world it's whatever you want it to be never doing that again okay so what I want to do is now add our level and our health up here in these blocks that we defined so if I take this actually I want to do this just to make it look like I did something okay and then if I take this I want to inside of it create a create a text element first and the size of this element is 125 by 125 so I can take this and set it to be 125 by 125 center it horizontally and vertically then increase the size to about 40 not 40 we'll do 30 we may change that I put a number in there for testing and make it bold okay so I want to make this a let's grab this blue again and I'll make it a lighter color lighter blue maybe maybe we'll make it 32 and I'll call this um, well call it level 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 value and then inside of level again I want to create actually I'll just duplicate this control D I want to drag this down bring it up just like that and I'm gonna say this is level and the size is like 14 and I want to make this white looks good and then let's call this name or something I don't know we're going to take everything inside of this and duplicate it and bring it over there so to do that though I want to duplicate one at a time duplicate this bring it over here just like that and then put it down in health and then duplicate name bring it over here keep it lined up just like that and then put it in health and get rid of the increment there And I want to take this and say it's like something like 28 and name of this is HP and the value color 
It's going to be a blue color. Or not a blue color, a red color. Something like that. Cool. So you may be thinking, this looks silly that we have all this spacing around this. And it, it does line up nicely with our centered columns, which is nice. But um, what if I did what I said I was going to do and add the radio progress bars? Well, to do that, I have a couple of icons. So now in my icons folder, I have a couple of images in here. They are set up as sprites like the rest of my icons and my other UI elements. And I have, uh, I have a crossed swords icon, which I got from game-icons.net that we have used for the item icons. And I just created them on there. I didn't do anything else, but I, I just added a little inner shadow and I changed the colors up and stuff like that. And downloaded the PNG and drug it into Unity and made it the sprite. And then radio progress bar, all that is, you probably can actually find this on uh, gameicons.net. I just did not look for it. I just made it up real quick. And uh, any photo editing program, any art program can make a circle, I'm sure. It's just a white circle to allow for us to easily change the tint to any color we want. So just a simple white, like a 10 pixel stroke circle. And it's also a sprite. So now we're going to use these two things. First of all, this is going to be the default icon in our inventory or not our inventory in our character panel showing that there's no weapon equipped and then we'd have no, no name up here and no stats or something like that whatever you want uh, but the idea is that I can show that means hey there's nothing equipped currently so if I were to unequip something that icon would pop up so when we do the code we'll get to that but when it comes to the radio progress bar that's happening now so I'm gonna go into my level I'm going to just create inside of level here. I'm going to create a UI element that's going to be an image. And we're going to just use it as it is. It's 100 by 100 centered. And I want to just take this radial progress bar and drop it on the sprite field. And you can see that this is actually centered in this block that we created. And the 9 is centered inside of the circle. This saying level right here looks makes it look like it's offset um perhaps if this was on top it would be less obvious hmm I don't know where you put it is it less obvious so maybe i'll just uh make this like a 12. i'll make it say level something like that that's less noticeable but it's also descriptive you could center the nine and the text together but i'm not going to worry about that so it's gonna say nine level and it's not bold okay cool so now we have this fill or not this fill it's just an image that we have set the source image to a radial progress bar the color still default and all that good stuff so what this is going to be though is i'm going to actually create an empty object and i'm going to call it progress and inside of progress i'm going to put this image that we just created and i'm going to call this the background and that's going to be what you see where there is no progress bar. And that'll make sense in a second. So if I were to just take this and I want to grab a color from our panel and make it a bit darker. I'm just completely going with the colors here. I don't I have nothing planned for the colors. I just have an idea in mind. So if I take that now and I duplicate it, hitting Control D, I want to call this fill. Notice that fill is below background drawing order top to bottom so fills gonna be on top if I make this white notice it's on top cool but what I want to do is I'll make this a color of our nine just like that and now this is where it gets fun if I go to I think it's fun if I go to image type and select field we have fill method pop up mine's already on radial 360 yours will probably be on horizontal or something like that but I'm going to select radial 360 and I'm going to say the fill origin is going to be the top and now I can take fill amount and I can lower it and you'll see what's happening there it's like a progress bar look at that so simple that was and all we have to do to control this is control the fill amount which is a float from 0 to 1 so we can do that with anything anything we can calculate a percentage of we can control the fill amount with right here 
It's very simple. I can flip this around to go the other way. I could change the orientation of it to go like that. And then flip that around like that. It's just really cool. And it's really simple. People think these things are, I'm not saying everybody else. People think these things are kind of complex to do. And when you have unity setting up images so that you can control the field directly and the field type directly, it makes it extremely simple. And that's probably the reason they have these features is to make this kind of thing simple and it could do many things think of like a a fade wipe right so you have a 360 fade wipe you can control the feel of the image in a 360 degree motion just like that in a snap or i can take this and say it's a 180 degree and i can control it from the base up like that so you could have a nice little um a wiping phase so you're loading a transition between scenes or whatever very simple to do with built-in functionality but anyway back to what we were doing <laughs> doing to get off track there so i'm going to set this up to be at the top and there we go so now this is going the progress bar is going to represent the experience that we have before the next level now our health is going to represent the current health out of the total amount of possible health so I'm going to take the progress bar, duplicate it, drag it down into health, and then place it over here, right in the center. Right in the center. Now I'm going to take the fill, and the fill color is going to change from its blue to its red. And just for fun, I'm going to change the value just like that. So now we have two different elements using two different progress bars that we, that we built from the exact same thing using one little simple circular image and we can control this very simply from code just uh, just by getting in there and messing with the fill amount it's very simple to do oh that's still bold can't have that and it needs to be 12 there we go <laughs> that's not even at the same Anyway, so that's going to be this episode. I know all I said we're going to do is lay out the UI, and that's all we did. And for some of you, that may have been boring, so I apologize. But in the next episode, we get to do the fun stuff, and we get to hook everything up and make it all work. And we'll uh, go through and build up a list of our character stats and then print them all out on screen. And then we'll uh, handle equipping and unequipping weapons and displaying that in the character panel. Then we'll hook up our health. Now, level, obviously, we don't have anything for that yet. We don't have a leveling system in place, but we're getting there, I promise. Lots of things to cover between level and loot and quests. And uh, we're, we're nearing, I want to say the end, but based on what's to come, we're nearing the the middle of, of this series. So that's great. If you do want to see what is to come, you can go to gogamegrind.com and go to the forum. And there's a topic there discussing what is to come in this series and what is going to happen before I say it's finished and we've got you know looting we've got to make a dungeon it's a very simple dungeon we'll go through and kill a couple mobs and collect treasure and complete a quest which means we're gonna have a questing system I'm looking at my board back here well, I don't have my glasses on so I can't see it but there's a lot of things up, a lot of blurry things up there so it's not many check marks from what I can tell so yeah, we have uh, we've got some stuff to come, but I uh, hope you stick around for that. If you do want to support the channel, you know the you know the whole drill. Patreon.com and get my assets, journal of an achievement system and stat track a stat tracking system, and get them as a patron for fifteen dollars for both of them, which is a two fifty deal. You get you save two fifty by doing it that way. It's crazy. You should do that. Any questions? Go to forum.gogamegrind.com. And I appreciate you guys watching. Hope you stick around for the next 40 episodes. My name is Austin, and I will see you next time.